Hi, we're on the bench here today, and I wanted to share with you a couple things that I've uh, shared with some people in person and uh, over Snapchat or Discord or whatever. This is my drawer of radioactive elements, small little collection that I have here. So we'll start with the less exciting stuff. Smoke alarms work using americium as an alpha particle source that gets blocked by smoke or water vapor in some unfortunate circumstances. So here in this small container is the americium source from a smoke detector. Now this is uh, relatively harmless, uh, only emits out of alpha particles. As long as you do not um, ingest this, you're not going to have any problems with this. This is also a really old source from a smoke detector that uh, kind of even failed, even if you would add a battery to it, still would not work. So that little yellow metal right there is emitting alpha particles. Now I don't have an alpha particle detector, so I'm not going to be able to show you that today, but that is a future project I hope to do. I also have another alpha source, which you may have heard of when you hear the early stories about radioactivity, and in particular the uh, radium girls who painted clock hands. So in this vial are some uh, kind of rusted and very old radium clock hands. They don't glow anymore. There's uh, not enough uh, radioactivity left in it, but if you take an off particle detector to it, you should still detect something. So, moving on from alpha sources, we can get some uh, other samples that aren't too, too hot. So, thorium gas lamp mantles. They uh, use thorium dioxide in gas mantles for propane lamps for the longest time in order to enhance the uh, brightness of the lamps. So, in this uh, lead pig here, I have two thorium lamp mantles, and I'm going to handle these guys with... Uh, a glove just because they're not in any kind of a uh, Ziploc container. You see they are just lamp mantles like you would use for a gas lamp. And these things are reasonably radioactive. They emit, uh, they'll emit betas and gammas and neutrons and whatnot. You know, the, the stuff that uh, your normal Geiger counter will actually pick up. So, got this guy on Amazon for like a hundred bucks has a uh, tube in this side right here, and I'm just going to put the tube right on the uh, thorium lamp mantles. And over the course of about a minute, we're going to get a uh, reading here for how radioactive these are. See the light's going red, so this guy is uh, not particularly happy with the amount of radiation, but this is designed to detect background. If your background is this high, you are, well, right now, it'd be about equivalent to being in an airplane. Still not uh, the best thing in the world, but not terrible either. That's about the highest reading I've gotten on an airplane, 330 counts per minute, or 2.3-ish microsieverts per hour. When I bought this counter, it came with this handy-dandy little uh, reference card, which I think is uh, very, very helpful. My normal background, and I live like within 5 miles of the Limerick Nuclear Generating Station, is about 20 counts per minute, um, sometimes as high as 25 or 30. Uh, at State College, where I go to school, here in Pennsylvania, uh, I get higher readings often just because of altitude as opposed to anything else. So, if we look at about the reading we're getting from the thorium lamp, lamp mantles right now, we're getting about 680 counts per minute, and it's fluctuating up and down now, so that's about the uh, constant reading you're going to get with the detector right on it. Uh, so that's, you know, pretty significantly above background, but in terms of short exposure, it is... Not too bad. A total count here of 944 for the exposure being right on top of it for the duration of this video is significantly less than a normal x-ray or a normal plane flight. I've put this counter through x-rays at the, uh, the uh, TSA checkpoints and it's got about 14,000 instantaneous counts going through the x-ray. So we're at about 1 14th of going through the TSA scan your bags machine. Now, in addition to uh, the thorium lamp mantles, which I will put away now. I'll have to make sure I wash my hands after this, just to be safe. Because these do uh, emit quite a bit more than the alpha sources. And if you get stuff like that on your hands for extended periods of time, you can get small burns. Uh, not like cancer causing or anything, but you'll get a beta radiation burn. So in this pig, I have uh, something different. This is a sample of uranium ore. It was bought on eBay. 
Now, again, there's there's no problems legally or anything with owning small amounts of uranium ore. It is pretty much illegal to uh, refine it or do anything with it. And uh, so you can just use it as a test source for your Geiger counter. Because you want to know your Geiger counter works if you're trying to detect dangerous levels of background radiation. So in this bag, it literally just looks like rocks. Um, just little pieces of rock in that bag. And the kind of yellowish, gray, boring colors that you get with the cheap uranium ore you can find. So we'll turn the detector on and we'll uh, put that right on this. And this will get a slightly higher reading than the uh, reading from the thorium lamp mantles. This is considerably more concentrated, but it's still not anything that's super, super dangerous. And we're monitoring our total dosing counts down there. As long as we stay under what a traditional plane flight is, and I found flying on a plane for, you know, uh, an hour at 200, counts per minute is 60 times 200 is like 1200 um, 12, 1200 counts so you fly on a three four hour plane ride you get plane plane ride you're getting you know three four thousand upwards of five thousand depending on conditions counts of uh, ionizing or potentially ionizing radiation there um, this guy's empty for now but if I get a sample certainly be adding it there so let this uh, count for a little bit while I talk about some storage considerations for the uranium. So for the thorium lamp mantles, it, it is pretty much completely sufficient to just shove them right in a lead pig. You, they're not that radioactive. You're not going to have issues. But you'll notice that the uranium is in uh, Ziploc bags. And the initial thought you'll have with that is that will be for containing dust because, you know, those are rocks. And if you crush them, you could get dust and you wouldn't want to inhale any kind of radioactive dust. But what you have to keep in mind is that uh, uranium eventually decays into radon, um, and, and radon is the reason that you run those tests in your basement, and you don't want to be breathing that stuff in, uh, then, you know, you might have to get a filter for your particular basement, otherwise that can affect the value of your house and stuff like that. I've had friends uh, deal with that particular testing and finding they had a radon issue. So to prevent radon gas from escaping, we simply put the sample in a Ziploc bag, and that also takes care of dust. And then there is one more consideration um, it might take a while to demonstrate, but right now we can look at the uh, radiation we're getting from this sample. We see we're getting about 700 counts per minute. So uh, based on where I have the detector, that's marginally um, higher than the, the thorium dioxide lamp mantles. So if we put this away, back in the lead pig, so I can demonstrate the last part of this. When I measure the background radiation right next to this pig, I'm actually going to be measuring 30 to 40 counts as compared to my background level, uh, which is about 20 counts. And the reason for that has to do with re-emission from lead shielding. So when you emit high energy ionizing radiation and it hits lead, lead is a big heavy particle and that will tend to break apart and also release either light, uh, like x-rays or gamma rays, or other particles depending upon the energy of the incident radiation. So, the result is that even though you lead shield this, you're still going to end up with uh, higher radiation than background just coming out of the actual lead shielding. So, th this is one of the reasons why if you were going to do a deep space mission and you were concerned about having uh, shielding on your spacecraft, you'd probably prefer water because water is a very uh, light particle and it does have good attenuation of these kinds of uh, radiation. But, the uh, end result is going to be you're not having these secondary emissions of x-rays and other particles. So if we give that another minute or two here, you can see we're, we're resting about 33, 34 counts per minute. So now, just because uh, I did forget to do it at the beginning of the video, um, I am going to sit this on the bench and we'll take a background reading while I put everything in the drawer and move it a sufficient distance away such that it doesn't contribute to this reading at all. Because even in vicinity like this, we're still going to uh, be around 30 counts per minute, which is slightly over background. Not enough to really cause an issue, and uh, according to the safety card they gave with this, anywhere from 50, 50 to 5 is normal background, and you shouldn't really be too concerned about it. You notice I did forget the uh, lid to the lead pig on there.
So now if we check our background reading, still at 34, I'll walk away. And this should start to drop pretty significantly to my normal background of 20 counts per minute. So if you're going to have this stuff, you want to make sure that you're storing it in some kind of shielding to attenuate the larger bits of radiation. Understand that even if you have shielding, just increasing the amount of lead isn't necessarily going to help you after a certain point. Because of secondary emissions, you're, you're going to have to use distance in combination with lead. And when you're handling this stuff, you want to make sure that you wash your hands after uh, so that none of it stays on and could potentially give you maybe a small burn. Uh, nothing cancer causing. But these are cool little radioactive test sources. I hope to build an alpha particle detector in the future and see you guys later.